Welcome to session three. We have a couple of girls who were not able to join us before this session. Um, so a big shout out to, I think um, Karina wasn't able to dial in in the past. I'd love to see her face because I think we just saw an icon before. And Do we have Karina's face now? I don't see her. I see a, I see a black screen. And um, Addie Lusk is joining us for the first time from Kentucky, which is really super exciting. Welcome to Addie. So um, up to now, we've had we've met twice so far. This is our third session, and hopefully you guys have a printout or a video uh, or sorry a PDF on your screen somewhere of. Um, the local government session that we had last time. Thank you, Virginia. I know. So with local government, we had two first select women here with us last time, and we learned about what it was like to be in charge of a town. So maybe in your breakout rooms, you looked at those sheets. I don't know if you reviewed any of those ideas that we discussed last week, um, but Virginia, if you could, if you could go to the cloud, just as a reminder for you guys, these were all the ideas that you entered into our word cloud at the last session, which were some um, issues that were going on in towns that are um, of most importance right now or that are interesting to you. Um, as we move forward in our sessions and you're thinking about whether you want to run for president uh, Ms. President U.S. of your town, perhaps you want to think about some of these issues and maybe choose one that is most interesting or important to you and start to think about how you could shape that into a platform if you were going to be running for office. So maybe it's not one of the ideas that you came up with yourself, but the great thing about sharing ideas is that we can learn from each other and maybe somebody else had a great idea that you'd like to use. And they're all here for you and there's an infinite number of more ideas, but these are just a way to get you started thinking about what might be most interesting to you. So, so far we had our first session was about women's history and leadership. And then last session we had local leaders. Today we're talking about state leadership and we have visitors who are leaders in our state. So. Sorry um, to those of you who aren't thinking about Connecticut as your frame of reference, but um, we, because we're in Connecticut, we are, we are calling on local state leaders in Connecticut. Yes, so this is where we are in the United States. We're the red state way up in the corner there. Um, and we have representatives now from Kentucky and Arizona. But um, as we're moving forward, if the girls who are not local here, or um, if the girls who are not local, maybe can think about and do some, some research after the session about the equivalent in their state to the leaders that we're hearing from today. Some of the same issues will come up no matter where you live in the United States, um, but we have chosen local leaders to where we are physically, geographically on the map. Okay. So this is, this is the state of Connecticut. We've got some um, icons here showing where a lot of the participants this year are calling in from. So we have a whole bunch from Fairfield County. Do you guys see other counties that people are calling in from? Maybe in the chat, if you're calling in from a different county other than Fairfield County, you could say hello. Do we have any hellos? I saw Kayla. Kayla McGuire dialed in and she's not in Fairfield County anymore. I think she and her sister are now in Middlesex County, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, do you guys see this, this picture here to the right on this slide? 
Does anyone know what it is? Anyone who's been in this program before has probably been inside this building. I see Evelyn's hand. Ev? I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> it, I thought it was something I knew, but it doesn't really look like it now. Wait, I think I know. Is it the like state capitals thing? Exactly. Hey, okay, exactly. Go exactly. ahead. Exactly. This is the Capitol building, and it's located in... Hartford, which is the state capital of Connecticut. So if we're able to go on our field trip physically, that'll be great. If we have to do it virtually, we'll visit the state capital virtually. But this is what the great capital building in Connecticut looks like. And today we're going to learn an awful lot about what happens inside of it. So with that, I'm going to hand over to Julia, who is our mentor who's gonna introduce the first activity that we're gonna be working on today, Julia. Hi, I'm Julia, and I'm gonna introduce the small group activity that we're gonna work on. So I'm a fourth year member mm -hmm. at Ms. President, and I'm also part of the junior board. I as well work in Girl Scouts. So we're, do, we're gonna do a small group discussion. Oh, never mind, I don't know. Okay. Uh, <laughs> do you have yeah. a question? Okay, well, I'm just describing that we're going to work on a small group discussion. I'm going to get to it in, a, in just a little second. It's okay. <laughs> and yeah, and over here is just listing things that I enjoy doing, like playing piano and volunteering. Yeah. So I'm going to talk about some fun facts about Connecticut. So a big fun fact about Connecticut is that Connecticut established actually the first constitution within the United States. It was 150 years before the original constitution was written, which was in 1776. And as well, we also developed the first hamburger, which is very fun. Yeah. Uh, we also developed the first Frisbee, which is a fun sport that I definitely recommend playing. And we also developed the first lollipop, which is a very fun treat. So. We also had the first woman elected governor on her own, not succeeding her husband. Her name was Ella Grasso and she was elected in 1975. As well, record setting women's uh, basketball team, they won around 90 games in a row, more than any men's or women's college team in history. And this was University of Connecticut, which is located within Connecticut. Uh, do you guys know some other fun facts about Connecticut that you want to share? You could put it in the chat or you could raise your hands and shout out. Yeah, let's put it. Yeah. I see a hand. Okay, it looks like Eva. Um, yeah, so I actually didn't know this, but my dad told me that um, if you're from Connecticut, because I was wondering what to call myself because I was like Connecticutian, Con Connecticut <laughs> It turns out they're called nutmeggers. And I did that. Yes. <laughs> great. <laughs> great. <laughs> very interesting. I like that. Yeah. Oh. We're known as a nutmeg state. So that's a very fun fact. Thank you. Um, I oh. have one, actually. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I'm pretty sure that we had the first colored TV, I think. I don't know if that's true, but oh. I, yeah, I, my grandfather told me because um, he's actually, he's from Romania, but he decided to do some research when he moved here with us. So oh. yeah, so he just found that out. So that's cool. Wow. I like that. Very cool. Thank you. Anyone I else? Go. Yeah, go ahead. So Connecticut is a U.S. You hold on. Oh, sorry. Okay, it was the U.S. in south southern New England. Good. Yeah. I like that. Thank you. Anyone else? <gasps> I have one. <laughs> I have one. I have one. I want to be like, I want to be one of the girls. 
Does anybody know of a of a circus that that's how that Connecticut was a home base to? Yeah, I think like one of the shows, like one of the greatest, like show. If you like watch The Greatest Showman, I think that was like the circus that was like really that was in Connecticut and just closed down a few years ago. I think. Good. Good. Which fun fact did you guys like best? So we're having some technical difficulties. <laughs> what was the most interesting one for you guys? Phrase it better. Well, I didn't know a lot of them, but I liked the first lollipop because I love <laughs> I like the hamburger one. Um, yeah, I also but- like the hamburger one. What was um, the first um, select woman? What was her name? Oh, Ella Grasso. Ella Grasso, yeah. Very cool, yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and introduce the small group activity. So within our breakout rooms, we're gonna share what we most we what we like most about our own state. So we're gonna talk about like where have you visited outside of your own town, and if you visited any other states, and if so, what makes your state different? Like what makes it unique and special to you? Do you know and do you know of anything that is made in your own state, like such as a product? Like for example, in Pennsylvania, Hershey's is made there. Is there anything that you know about Connecticut that is made here and you want to share? And what do you like best? about your state. So we're going to go into our breakout rooms and I'm going to share. So when you get the invitation to join a breakout room, accept it. So Abby, you need a room and Melanie needs a room and Jennifer needs a room. Oh, and Megan, you need a room. (laughs) Get a room, Megan. Oh, and I get a room too? Are we supposed to go into rooms? Sorry about that. Oh, (laughs) okay. Abby, you put Senator ready? Flexer in a room? She's going to stay with us, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I see. Are we all in? Melanie, yeah. No. Yeah, we're good. We're good? All right. Welcome, May Flexer. We see you. Thank you. Up. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, May, for coming, really. We're really excited. You're welcome. Thanks for so inviting excited me. excited to have both of you here today. I understand you have a little, a little, um, something called Rose, a little, a little one. Oh, yes, she's right here with me. She, you eating. can your camera on so we can meet her. I will as soon as I'm <laughs> meeting her. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I didn't think it would be the best intro. <laughs> it's reality, is what it is. Yeah. True. True. <laughs> For some yeah. reason, May, I just remembered that a lot of places, but um, probably my favorites are Montana and the Bahamas. Mm. Relaxing. I'd love to be there right now. <laughs> okay, so do you guys want to move on to the next question? Have you guys visited any other states? And if so, what makes Connecticut so different? Go ahead. Um. I visited Virginia and it's different from that because there's like a lot of beaches and the houses are more close together and it's kind of like a lot like there's like a lot of small neighborhoods just like Florida and it's really walkable to different places. Interesting. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else? Um, How about Ananya? Oh, sorry. Oh, should I answer? 
Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, I feel like I visited a bunch of different states, and I think they're all pretty similar, as in, like, Connecticut has beach communities, and it has cities, and it has, like, suburbs, and I think, like, all states have that, but, like, some cities are more, like, city-like, and some beaches are bigger and stuff. I agree. I see that. Anyone else? I have one. Go ahead. So... I visited Guatemala and the place, the thing that's different about them is there's a, it's like a poor country. So a lot of people don't have a lot of money. So, and also the houses are really far from each other, like oh. almost like a mile away. Uh, yeah. Interesting observation. Thank you for sharing. Okay. So I'm going to move on to, do you know of anything that is made in your own state, such as a product that you guys want to share? How about Pip? Can you unmute Pip? Can you hear me? Um, so I know that Pez is made in Connecticut. I think it's, I've been there. I think it's made in Hartford, maybe. Mm. Nice. Yeah, thank you. Anyone else? Oh, go ahead. Who are you calling on, Ava? Avery. Um. I'm not totally sure about this, but I'm pretty sure that um, the company for goldfish was in Connecticut. Pepperidge Farms. Pepperidge Farms, I'm gonna look that up. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Okay. I'll move on to the next question then. Uh, what do you guys like best about Connecticut? How about Maggie? Um, I like how in Connecticut, uh, there's not a lot of cities. So it's a lot of like um, suburban areas. And I like suburban areas because it's not too crowded. And you can like bike to your friend's house and um, without like traffic or anything like that. So that's what I like about Connecticut. Very cool. Thank what you. about Elise? Uh, I that it's not. It's like a small day, so um, like in your town, kind of like everybody is it's like, like you've got um, lots of people have lots of friends around here and so what? Thank you for sharing. Uh, anybody else? We've got Emily Smith had her hand raised. Go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Anybody else? Oh, one more. Um, Addy. Um, so in Kentucky, I read horses. And if I got this right, Lexington is the horse capital of the world. So um, it just makes me more able to ride horses. Yeah. You're right, Addy. Thank you, everyone, for sharing. Very interesting to hear. So thanks so much, Julia. Um, 
Now that we're all excited about our state and we're feeling proud, let's, let's start to think about who makes decisions for our state. We've seen this pyramid before. We saw it in our last session. And I remember when Mrs. Gunther asked who makes decisions for us, I think it was Allison Pham who said something about this triangle on top. Allison, do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah, do you remember who makes decisions for us? Um, us. <laughs> <laughs> Good, Allison. And how do we do that? I see Sydney's hand up. Sydney? Um, well, for the state, I think it's like um, either like the Senate or the mayor, and we do that by electing the, by electing that and voting. Yeah, that was the that was the word I was looking for, electing and voting. Um, today we're going to talk um, about our state level government and who makes decisions for our state. So we have elected officials in the state that we're going to be talking about. Um, in Connecticut, we don't have any county government. Like we're living, we live, most of us live in Fairfield County or New Haven County or Middlesex County. Um, we don't have any county government in the state of Connecticut. Below the state level, we have cities or towns. But today we're gonna to be talking about the state level leaders. So this tree is supposed to represent the three branches of government. You guys heard of the three branches of government before? I see some heads, some thumbs up. Great. Um, is there anybody who can tell me the three branches of government? We've kind of got a cheat sheet in front of us. And I got a note that Addie raised her hand and Pip raised her hand. Since we just heard from Addie, how about Pip? Pip, what are the three branches of government? Government are like up there. It's state officers, general assembly, yeah, and the court. Okay, so those are those are um, the sort of um, how they are expressed, right? So the three branches of government. Just can like, I say them? Yes. Okay, so there's the legislative, the executive, and the judicial. Thank you. Yes, so just like at the federal level, at the state level, we also have the same three branches of government. Um, the executive branch, you see the one in the middle, is led by these six elected officials. So um, we have state officers who serve a four-year term, and we've got Governor, have you guys ever seen this guy before? Have you seen his picture before? I don't see any hand. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. got a couple of thumbs up. <laughs> okay. So this gentleman on the left side of the screen is our governor, Ned Lamont. And we are lucky enough to have a female lieutenant governor. Susan, and I always have trouble pronouncing her last name, but it's Bice Whisk, unless, unless one of our state leaders can correct my pronunciation. Oh, that's um, correct. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, we also have these, these other four people down at the bottom of our screen. One of them comes very often to Wilton. I think she may originally be from Wilton. I'm not positive. Her name is Denise Merrill. She's the secretary of the state of Connecticut. And she was the one who was responsible for voting in the most recent election and every election. She is, she's the, the chief uh, in, in charge of voting for our state. Uh, we also have the treasurer, the comptroller and the attorney general who are all elected officials in our state. And this, is, this comprises the executive branch. Then the next branch is the judicial branch. 
you guys have heard of the Supreme Court. How many of you knew that there was a Supreme Court in the state of Connecticut and in every state across the country? I see one hand. So there's a, there's a state Supreme Court in addition to the federal Supreme Court. This is what it looks like in our state. And this is a non COVID picture where we actually see everyone gathered. Do you notice anything about these justices? Evelyn's got a hand raised. Evelyn, what do you notice? That there's more men than women. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of them look kind of older. Like not that many of them. Look <laughs> like they look like they're in their 60s or something like that. I mean, they all, a lot of them have whitish, whitish sort of hair. So. Mm. They aren't they aren't super young, right? I think you have to be fairly far along in your career to be nominated as a judge, I think. Um, so the judicial department is composed of the superior, appellate, and Supreme Courts. And they're nominated by the governor and appointed by the General Assembly. There are also, there are lots of different kinds of judges. There are probate judges who are elected by the voters of the town or the district that they serve. Judges ensure that legal problems are solved fairly and that they follow the laws of Connecticut. And this, this photo is a little bit unfair. It's missing one woman. So in our state Supreme Court, we have three female justices. Great, so the third branch is the legislative branch and it's comprised of two different houses. The General Assembly is comprised of the Senate and the House of Representatives. Which one do you think is bigger? Kanira, I see your hand. House of Representatives? Yeah, it looks like there are a lot more seats in there, huh? Does anybody have any idea how many there are? Can I take a guess? Yes. Um, I'd say about maybe like 60 people. So that's, that's a fair guess. Um, in Connecticut, we have 151 state representatives. How many do you think might be women? Ananya has her hand up. Okay. 270? Mm, I wish. That would be great <laughs> if, we were, if we were that even. Um, 43 are women. And in the state Senate, we have 36 state senators. And it might be fair if half of them were women. Do you think we have equal ratio in there in the no. state Senate? No, also not quite. Nine are women. Two of them are Republicans and seven are Democrats. So the, the job of the General Assembly is to write new laws or change past laws. Um, so the legislative branch approves judicial appointments and they can override the veto from the governor. The voice of the people can override the veto of the governor. Okay, next slide. This is where you guys get to test your knowledge and see if you are really paying close attention We've, um, Mrs. Mitchell has put together a super fun Kahoot. So if you are not, you're probably not able to, um, there we go, Mrs. Mitchell has put a link in the chat. So if you can go into the chat and um, click on the link to do the Kahoot, you can test your knowledge. And when we come back, we're gonna meet our, our visitors. And Anne, if our visitors would like to do the cahoots, they can start <laughs> <laughs> in the chat. Is everybody able to get into the cahoot? If you're not, send us a message and let us know if we if you need help of some kind.
All right, Megan and Katie, over to you. Hi, everyone. Okay, so we're gonna do some fun stretches that we do for the hockey games. All right, um, you want me to start, Megan? Okay, so everyone get up off the floor. So <laughs> we're gonna start with, so these are called Chew the Chicken. So you go down the ground and you put your arm and you reach up. Okay, so everyone. Now we're gonna do some lunges, so. Um, okay, uh, the next one is going to be um, a leg stretch. So you're just going to grab your foot like this and pull back. It stretches your quad. And me and Megan, we do this every day before field hockey practice and games. So if you are going to exercise, it's also just a good tip to try to stretch before. Um, the next one is called soldier kicks, which you can see Megan doing. You're just going to kick straight up. <laughs> we always do this so then we don't pull muscles. And then finally, you can stretch your arms. It's good, especially in school, too, to get off your computer every now and then and stretch. Yeah, if you have some free time outside, um, definitely take the time to stretch because um, it can honestly get tiring, you know, just sitting in the same spot every single day and your muscles can get stiff, so. And then we're going to end off by saying a fun fact about field hockey. So in all the other parts of the world, it's more common for men to play field hockey than women. So that's interesting. And then now we are going to go to Bella, who's gonna introduce our guest speakers for the day. Thank you guys for that break. That was so much fun. <laughs> Definitely need that after sitting at my computer for school. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm Bella. I'm not sure if I have to introduce myself, but um, I play volleyball, basketball. I guess I have some fun facts about me. Um, I, sp I, sp I spend my summers in Martha's Vineyard, and I love spending time with my family as well, and I'm a junior this year at Wilton High School. So yeah, I'm just going to introduce the speakers today and ask them some questions. So I'm sure you saw them popping up because they are in the meeting, <laughs> but we have Themis Claritas, who is a current minority leader in the Connecticut House of Representatives. Um, a fun fact is that she was first elected in 1998, and she's held office since 1999. And she's also the first woman to lead the Connecticut Republican Caucus. So that's really interesting. And we're going to hear from her in just a couple minutes. Um, our next person that we have he, um, with us today is May Flexer, and she is a member of the Connecticut State Senate um, since 2015. She joined her Democratic Town Committee when she was only 18. And at 23, she is one of the youngest people in the state ever elected um, Town Committee Chairwoman. So thank you guys for being here with us today. Um, I'm just gonna ask you guys a couple questions. And then afterward, we're gonna separate into just two breakout rooms so that each leader can basically just address a smaller group of the girls for any um, specific questions. Yeah. So if you don't mind, it would be great if you guys could just tell us like what you do now and why your role is important in um, Connecticut. And either one of you can go first. <laughs> May, do you wanna go? Go ahead, go ahead, Representative Claritas. Okay. Um, well, thank you, you all, for doing this. I think this is just a great program. I know I've done it before when we were fortunately live, and it's too bad we have to do it this way, but at least we can do it 
uh, get it done because I think the program is amazing and I hope you guys never stop doing it. Um, I am the House Republican leader. Um, as we just talked about for a few minutes, um, I was the first woman ever to be leader of the House Republicans, but I'm also the only woman leader in the legislature, Republican or Democrat. Um, we have six leaders. Um, it's the Senate president, the Senate majority leader, the Speaker of the House, the House Majority Leader, and then the House Minority Leader and the Senate Minority Leader. So of the six of them I have for the past six years been the only woman and it looks like going forward that there will, will be no women because I didn't run again um, this year. But I have been doing this for 22 years and I never in a million years thought that it would take, I would be here 22 years, <laughs> but I really liked it. And I my family was never involved in politics, so I didn't have any real you know, background in it. It was just something that was interesting to me. My high school competed in the uh, Connecticut Bar Association high school mock trial contest. And we, um, you know, we, we had never done anything like that before. And our school came in, when it made it to the quarterfinals the first year and then won the state championship the next two years, which was really just a miracle. Cause like I said, we'd never done it before. So I became interested in law and I ultimately went to the law school. Um, and after I got out of law school, I did a million and one things. I mean, things that you would never think that would have anything to do with politics, so they didn't. Um, and then I ran for office and quite honestly, a friend of mine one day said to me, you know, Thevis, the woman that is in your state representative seat isn't running again. You should run for that seat. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what the towns were. I really, you know, I had, I had an understanding of politics that I think your average person has, and it was interesting to me, but I didn't, I didn't know anything about state government besides, you know, what I learned in school and, and on our little, you know, class trips to the Capitol kind of thing um, that most kids learn. And I decided to run. And when I ran, um, it, it was really difficult. I mean, I think May, will May and I will both talk about this to a certain extent about even though it's 2020, almost 2021, you know, there's still a lot of catching up to do with how men and women are treated. I mean, I, when I ran the first time, like I said, I had a, an unorthodox path to running for office. I mean, I went to law school. That was probably the last orthodox thing I did before I ran. Uh, you know, after that, I, I competed in fitness competitions. I was a swimsuit model. I worked for the WWE. Um, I did all sorts of weird things that, you know, was a great part of, of kind of growing up and experiencing different things. And I encourage everybody to do as many different things as you can before you kind of get really serious with your life because I think it, it makes you who you are and gives you this, this um, outlook that's different. I mean, when I was in law school, when I was in high school, I thought I'm gonna go to law school, I'm gonna be a partner in a corporate firm or I'm gonna be a, a prosecutor. You know, I'm gonna do my 80 hours a week, become a partner or work in the prosecutor's office. And I did neither one of those things. So, um, you know, I've just been very honored to serve my district this long. I've been so honored to be the first woman Republican leader and the only woman leader in the entire legislature. Um, I know you pro guys probably have a bunch of questions. So that's just a little background about me. May. Thank you. Um, uh, nice to see you, Representative Claritas, and too. congratulations. And, congr and congratulations to you too. Thank so you. So in the past six months, one of us got married and one of us had a baby. Oh. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm the one with the baby. So if there's an interruption, yes. I apologize in advance. Right now she's chilling across the room in her swing. Hopefully it'll stay that way. But I'm, I'm thrilled to be with you guys. Um, again, I was really grateful to be invited and um, I've been listening to your work for the last little bit now. And um, I'm, I'm thrilled to see so many of you excited and engaged in, in this, um, this organization. Um, uh, as was mentioned in, in the intro, um, I did get involved in politics at a really young age. And what I'll tell you guys is the story that really got me interested in politics. And I was just a little bit older than you guys. I um, was a student at Killingley High School, which is my hometown. And in the town of Killingley, like many towns in Connecticut, the budget for the town, so how much money the town spends on different things, including the schools, was set at a town meeting. And uh, when I was a junior in high school, there was a proposal to cut spending on sports and foreign language and music programs. And so a bunch of us high school students got together and we went to the town meeting and we said to people as they were walking into the town meeting, please consider us when you're voting tonight. These programs are important to us. 
Um, I walked up to two gentlemen. And I handed them a flyer that said that much. And those two gentlemen said to me, you kids are wasting your time. You have no say in what's going to happen here. Oh. I was really disappointed that two adults would speak to me that way. Um, you know, as a young person who was just excited to have my voice heard. And I went inside to the town meeting and uh, not only were they just two adults in the community, but they were two members of our town council. So the people who were really in charge of making decisions for our town. A year later, one of those town councilors decided he wanted to be a state senator. And so I called up the person he was running against and said, how can I help you? Because there was no way I was gonna let someone who thought kids shouldn't have a say in our town get a promotion to be our state senator. Um, I loved that experience working on that campaign. I had a wonderful time and never did I dream that you know, 10 years or 15 years later, I would be the state senator from that very same district. So um, I'm really grateful to the opportunity that, uh, that I've had over the last several years to serve in this role. I was reelected um, on election day this year, the Senate and the House in Connecticut run every two years. Um, so I was grateful to, to get the support of the people in my district again. And I'm thrilled to be with you guys today and talk with you about what we do around the state budget, around enacting laws. And I'd be really excited to hear any ideas that you all have about things we could do differently in Connecticut or things you think we should do better. Thank you both so much. That was really helpful. Um, you both kind of touched upon my next question, which was basically um, just, like just asking what was your experience like in both middle and high school um, and how that lead to where you are today. But it seems like you guys kind of both explain that. But if you want to add on to that in any way, you definitely can just to encourage these guys if they can get involved in any way. You know, I think I don't really have that much to add to it, but I'll just say that my experience in high school being involved in that mock trial competition really got me more interested in, in a legal career. And I think that for me that, and then working on a local state representative race um, when I was in college, kind of, they connected to me. And a lot of times many people in public office are lawyers. Um, I mean, not all of them by any means, but you know, a lot of times there's a connection there for me. I had that connection. And I had that interest in, in doing something that involved, you know, the public and helping people. And my family was in business for many years. And none, again, none of them were ever in politics, but they, they always encouraged us to, my sister and I and my cousins, to kind of give back in whatever way you have an interest in and, and you have a passion in. So there's nothing, there's no right or wrong answer in regards to giving back. It's whatever you feel excited about. And you know, I took it a step further because for those years I've been in the house, I was trying to convince my sister to run uh, and she finally did. So we're, we're both state representatives for the past six years and we're the only sisters that have ever been elected together on the state level. So that was kind of fun for me. I'll just tack on to that, that Themis and I actually have something else in common. My sister is not a state legislator, but my sister has served on our on the Board of Education in our hometown for the last decade too. So we do have that, um, that, that sisterly uh, dedication to public service in common too, which is kind of funny. Yeah, that is really funny. <laughs> Thank you, that's so interesting. Um, my next question is just um, what, advice do you guys have for young girls today who may want to take on a role like you both did? I, um, you know, I grew up in a Greek family. My parents were born here. Um, you know, we didn't, not my parents didn't speak Greek, but we were always really, really proud of our ethnicity and where my grandparents and, you know, the rest of our ancestors were from. But my dad grew up with three brothers. And so he grew up in your typical kind of Mediterranean, uh, male dominated kind of family. Although my grandmother was a tough cookie, I'll tell you that. And so then he had two daughters and all his brothers had daughters except for one. So there's six kids and one boy. You know, and I always ask my mom uh, growing up, did daddy, because my dad's really into sports and he's very involved in his businesses and that kind of thing. And did he ever want, was he disappointed when he had girls? He goes, no, no, never for one second. He never, um, you know, thought about it, he never questioned it. He was just proud and excited to have, you know, his children and, you know, and raise them in a way that 
we could believe, my sister and I, that we could do whatever we wanted. And it's interesting because whenever we talk about uh, women and people ask about who your idol is or who your mentor is, I never had kind of an official mentor. There have been women along the way that I've admired, but I will... We all talk about our moms, right? We talk about how important our moms are, what role models our moms are. And I'm no different in regards to that. But I think for women, especially young women and growing up, having a strong dad who supports whatever you do and encourages you and supports you the way your mom does is just as important, if not more sometimes, because, you know, it's teaching men and young boys about strong women and respecting women and understanding that women, you know, are equal to men in every way and can do whatever they want to do, not just other women. Although, as May will tell you, we all know many women that beat each other up, which is, you know, not okay either, but it's, it's raising boys and raising men that understand that. So then they can be fathers to women and, and support them and empower them. You know, so I mean, what I would say to anybody, anybody on this or any of your friends, Like, don't take any crap from anybody. If you want to do something, you should do it. And you know what? You may not succeed at everything you do. You may not. You may fail. And that's okay. Although it's scary. I mean, I I am totally afraid of failure. I will fully admit that. But it's all right. Because you don't know what you're good at and what you really love and what you have a passion for unless you give it a try. And that's why I always encourage everybody to do as many internships, internships as possible and just go out of your comfort zone and and try and meet different people and, and do those kind of internships that maybe you don't, you never thought you'd be interested in. Um, but I think my, you know, my sister gave me this bracelet a couple of years ago and it says she believed she could. So she did, <laughs> you know, and that's what I will just say to all of you that it's very important. And we're lucky when we have supportive family um, and supportive friends and a lot of our friends who are actually family, but, you know, turn out to be as, as supportive and caring as family, you have to believe that you can do it. You know, and as long as you believe you can do it, that's all that matters. So you'll do it. Thank you. Once again, another commonality is my sister gave me a bracelet that said that too. <laughs> Seriously? Which is kind of funny. Um, I, um, you know, I would just say um, to all of you, if you're interested in politics and government, then there's an opportunity for you to get involved now. If there's an issue that you're really passionate about and you'd like to see the state government make a difference in or our federal representatives, there's an opportunity to reach out to them and and be aggressive in terms of having your voice heard. Um, And then I would also say from my own experience as a young person and then as a candidate over these many years, um, you know, if, if you're excited about a candidate locally, volunteer. Um, I remember the people who volunteer on my uh, campaigns. Uh, obviously, I started out as a campaign volunteer. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really grateful that to the folks who volunteered on my campaign over the last uh, several weeks. You'd be surprised um, how much of an impact you can make on a, on a local um, race. Uh, by volunteering. And I, I think that many of you um, live in the district of uh, State Senator Will Haskell, who was elected to the State Senate, I believe, when he was just 22 years old. And he had spent his teen years volunteering on a lot of different campaigns and interning in a lot of different offices. Um, so I would encourage all of you to do that if this is something you are really interested in and you want to do. Um, Will, I think, is an impressive um, person to think about, but there aren't enough women like him. And so I encourage all of you, if you're passionate about politics, um, don't be afraid to, to be ambitious and start volunteering and seeing if, if this is something you might want to do too. Thank you. That was really inspiring. Um, I guess my final question for you before we break off into, I think we're doing breakout rooms, correct? Um, but yeah, um, before we do that, just my last question is, what is your proudest accomplishment so far? Just like among all your years, like working in this field, what is the one thing you're most proud of? I mean, for me, it's really hard. I mean, I have asked that question a lot and it's a great question, but it's hard to pick one thing. I mean, I'll tell you this, I grew up very, very shy, like painfully shy. 
And so the fact that I ran for office in the first place is utterly amazing to me still, because I don't necessarily see myself the way other people see me. I mean, I know I'm doing the things I'm doing, but I don't, and I don't always feel that way. Um, just the fact that I ran the first time and my opponents did such horrible things to me and put them all over the internet and all over the news, all over the country. Um, you know, the fact that I got through that and I won was amazing to me. I have to be honest with you. Not that I won, but that I didn't just say, I can't, this is ridiculous. I'm not going to, not going to deal with this kind of stuff. And the shame of it now, 22 years later, is it's way worse. It's way worse to run for office and the things people do to you and say about you. It's really a shame because that's why it's difficult to get good people to run. Um, you know, I was very involved in my, my first year, actually my first session, we passed a law about voyeurism in Connecticut. We were the first state to pass a law about that. And at the time, I will tell you that it was like pulling teeth to get that bill passed because it was mostly our male colleagues in the House and the Senate that just sat there and didn't understand what I was talking about. Because we had a big issue in Woodbridge in my district where a, a kid in high school, um, a private school, so there was you know, there was people from all different towns was going up to girls' windows and taking pictures of them in various states of undress and they didn't know it. And then he was, you know, passing them out all over the place and nobody still never got caught until he went to college in New York. They caught him doing it there and they got, a, they got a search warrant. They came back to Connecticut, took all his stuff here. They found pictures of girls and their moms and all sorts of things. And I had talked to a, um, a uh, prosecutor that I was friends with because I had interned in the state's attorney's office. And you said, we have a huge loophole in, loophole in our laws. I mean, literally for that, for what he did, he's going to get, you know, a breach of peace, basically, you know, or disorderly conduct. So if you go into a bar and you have a fight, you'll get disorderly conduct, which is a very low level misdemeanor. Um, that's all they could have given him for that. So that was kind of what I ran on in my first year. I passed that law and we were the first one to do that in the country and, and nobody understood it. And I kept telling our male colleagues, I said, well, what if it was your wife or your daughter or your mom or your sister? Would it be a big deal to you then? And within one year of passing that, we had so many arrests on that law that the next year I came back and increased the penalty to a felony and not one person flinched. Not one person questioned it, not one person, men asked why, we needed it because it, it had gotten so much notoriety and so much exposure on the arrest that it's actually a real thing that happened a lot. And now we've seen in the past 20 years how all of that kind of stuff has exploded because of the internet and social media and, you know, and everything. People could just put anything up they want. They can say anything they want. And usually they don't sign their name when it's a bad thing. Um, so, I mean, I, I can go through a list of 50 things, but I think that was one of my proudest moments. And I would just say that the, the work I'm the proudest of is the work I've been able to do the entire time I've been in the legislature around um, violence in families and violence against um, women. Unfortunately, there's a, a lot of people who have to deal with violence, um, violent situations in their families and it can be really hard for people to recognize why that's happening and figure out a way to get away from a violent situation. And I've done a lot of work to make sure that people who find themselves in that situation can get the support they need to move away from it. And also to make sure that people who are violent towards other people um, face the appropriate uh, penalties and that there's a, a larger recognition of why that kind of violence happens and why people who are the victims of that kind of violence may not um, may not recognize it and may not um, initially reach out for help, but trying to change the way that we talk about these forms of violence so that women in particular, and it's often women who are victims of this kind of violence, but not only women, um, just making sure that they've, they've got the tools that they need to report that violence if they want to, get out of the violent situation and um, and make sure the person who is violent towards them um, can't can't commit that kind of those kinds of attacks anymore. So I'm really proud of of that work and and excited. Um, that's one of the things you know we have to decide every two years whether or not we want to run again. And Representative Claritas made a different decision for the first time in a long time um, this year to not run again. And I know that when I think about every two years, you know, do I want to run again? 
Um, those are the issues I think about the most and the, the new things I'd like to do to make Connecticut's laws even stronger um, in regard to those issues in particular. Thank you so much, that was really helpful. Um, both of those accomplishments are amazing and I'm sure tons of people were inspired today. Um, so next we're just gonna go into breakout rooms and we're gonna have two rooms and each one of you guys are just gonna be in each one answering questions that they may have. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we can go to that, thank you. <laughs> Hi, um, who is, we've got one more here. Okay, hi girls. Before, hi, before we transition to Natalie, can we just yeah. say thank you? A big yeah. round of applause to, um, to our wonderful guests for being so inspiring for us. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you thank guys you. so much. Thank and congratulations. Thanks for having us. Congratulations. Aww. Yay. Hello. Our baby's so cute. I know. Thank that's you. <laughs> so hey, I want to see. Hold on. <laughs> What's your name? Can you smile? Her name is Rose. She's so beautiful. Oh, thank you. She's so cute. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> I think she's so tired. Um, How old is she? She's four months old. Oh. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us today and giving us so much of your time you're thank welcome thanks for having us Seamus and May thank you so thank much you. thank, thank you very well. much thank you so cute. love you baby okay so now as to finish up we are going to ask Natalie I don't see Natalie there she is Natalie you are up hey so as she mentioned, my name is Natalie. I'm a senior at RHS and I um, am part of the ABC program. I'm involved in different clubs at school. Uh, this is my third year as a mentor and I am co-president with Ellie Carter of the junior board. I enjoy doing techie stuff. I love children, working with them, public speaking. And I started my own reading program over quarantine, reading to children all over the world. Um, so today we're gonna be learning about vision board so if anyone has heard of vision boards you can raise your hand um but you don't need to like unmute your mic but you can raise your hands um and i did make a vision board a while ago you know in our non-virtual world we'd be able to make them and show each other our cool physical vision boards but now we have to make our vision boards virtually and we have a platform called padlet so we're going to discuss what a dream board is or vision board so an activity that combines goal setting, your future potential, your dreams for your future, and what you aspire to do. So it's a board that's basically putting all your dreams on one you know, piece of paper, one um, platform area. And so what we're gonna do is use Padlet and online images to create a personal vision board of what you wanna do in the future. So you're just gonna use this online platform and paste pictures from Google of your dog, of you know, a cool house you want to live in, of a cool car you want to drive, your role model. So on my vision board, I have Michelle Obama as my role model because I really love her. And I have a lot more other stuff. So I have like beauty, you know, treat yourself luxuriously. I have a leader. I have money and power. I have the best hair type is your hair type. And, you know, just things that I could look back at my vision board and be like, wow, this is what I want to aspire to be. These are my goals. These are, you know, what I want to be in the future. 
So that's basically what you guys will do. And to start off, you're going to think of what you enjoy, whether it's a sport, a school subject, an after school activity, what are your talents? Do you play a sport? Do you play an instrument? Um, do you like reading? Do you like swimming, dancing? Um, what challenges are the most fun for you? So things that are challenging, you know, in school or even in life at all. Um, who do you look up to? If it's your mom, as um, our leaders had mentioned, if it's your mom, if it's a role model, if it's, I don't know, Justin Bieber, go ahead and put that on your vision board. Um, where, when do your best ideas come from? So, you know, when do your best ideas come from? Where do you get them from? Um, gather images, memes, things you created. So it's basically just a board for you to put all your thoughts and all your, you know, goals, even if they're the craziest dreams, you could put unicorns, anything on your vision board. But we just want to see what you guys aspire to be and, you know, what you're looking for in your future. So that's basically a vision board. And I'll show you guys mine once again. And yeah, so we're going to be making it on Padlet. And yeah, that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions, I guess you can comment and I'll be able to answer them or any of the people as well. Okay, go ahead, Stephanie. How long have you been doing this? How long have I been doing the program or making vision boards? Vision boards. Oh, vision boards. Um, Not for very long. I've probably like started freshman year because it's something, it's a really great thing to do because when you look at your vision board, you look at your goals. You have your set goals on one, you know, area and you can think of, you know, the goals you want to accomplish, the goals you're thinking of accomplishing, and what you want in your future. So I've been doing it for a little while because it helps me stay focused on the things I really want. Thank you. You're welcome. Does anyone else have a question? Are you guys excited to make your vision board? So what you guys are going to do, you're going to make them, you know, during your spare time, maybe after the session is over, maybe over the weekend. Um, and yeah, and then we're going to be able to see them hopefully the next session. Um, and that is it for our vision board activity. Thank you, Natalie. So yeah, girls, whenever you have some time and you'd like to, to put your contributions up, if you want to make one that's on a big board and take a picture and upload a photo of the actual thing onto the Padlet, that's great too. Um, and we can like each other's um, contributions and make comments and support each other in this group project. So you should probably, most of you are familiar with Padlet, right? Have you done Padlet before? Yeah, great. Okay. So we'll put the link in the chat and we'll also send it as an email out the way we do at the end of the session. So you'll be able to do it um, in your own time after because we are out of time for tonight. Um, before you go, we would love it if you could let us know what you thought of the session by uh, scanning the QR code and giving us some um, of your thoughts about today's session. You can also go through the link that's here, the Menta Mentimeter link. And I'll leave that up for you to, um, to be able to click through. And Anne, when's our next session? Our next session, I believe it's December 4th. I can't click on that. So Elise, if you have a cell phone, you can hold it up. Otherwise, maybe we can put the, the link in the chat for that also. If, if um, you're oh, thank you. Ann, I can't click the like Padlet link. It's not letting me click it. You're trying to go on the Padlet one, Kanira? The Padlet Wait. one should work. I can't pull those links out right now because I'm sharing. The Padlet one works for me. Okay. Yeah, they are in the chat. Um, okay. And if you do the Mentimeter first, and I'll make sure the Mentimeter, if you can do now, and I will send everybody the Padlet links through email. Great. That's great. That's Thank great. You. Do that. So our next session is Friday, December 4th. What? got a few weeks to work on the Padlet and we will reconvene for our federal leaders session December 4th. Super exciting. Um, and until then, we've got Thanksgiving. Um, hope you guys have a wonderful couple of weeks and we are super excited to see you at the next session.
If you have any questions in the meantime, please feel free to reach out to us um, and have an awesome, awesome couple weeks. Thank, Thank you. you. Ms. Noons, our message as they leave the next slide, special. Oh, you guys recognize this woman? Both of them, the woman and the shadow. Do you know who they are? Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris, awesome. Who is? The girl by the bull in uh, New York City. Oh, she is an, that's an awesome sculpture. This, this shadow is actually based on- Ruby Wait, Bridges. is that Ruby Bridges? Ruby Bridges. Yes. yes. Ruby Bridges. Who said that? Was that? That was Evelyn and Pip nodding too. And I think right. a lot of other girls nodding too. Yeah. This, this was a very inspiring um, illustration that went around. It was kind of viral on Facebook this week and last week. Does this make you feel inspired too? That the shadows of the women who were brave and went before are the ones who we're building the new future on. And now a woman is going to be the vice president of the United States. How fantastic.